buy me a loaf of bread. Please don't. I'm endorsed by the NOW organization, NASW, and Dr. Brockbar, who helped Aaron Brockovich in the environmental Thank issues you. that affected California. First, I want to start by thanking everybody for coming out tonight. Um, this is exactly what building community, what, uh, what grabbing the horn by the bulls and taking your communities back means, participating in the civic process. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to encourage all of your neighbors and family members to vote on March 3rd for whoever they vote. Obviously, I would ask for them to vote for me. But, uh, you know, it's a democracy, so we could vote for whatever candidate we, we prefer. Uh, why did I decide to run? The, it's a laundry list. It's many reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons is basic lack of basic services in my community. Uh, the violence in my community. I live on Wabash and Soto, approximately, in that community. Uh, it's one of the most violent communities in, within CD14. Uh, but it's also one of the most beautiful communities within CD14. My neighbors were a very close-knit community. We all look out for one another. But unfortunately, the services never seem to get to our communities. Uh, my father is a senior citizen. He's 80 years old. He has disabilities. And unfortunately, he can't walk from our home to the corner of our, of our block. So that's not acceptable. It's not fair that my father you know, worked for 40 years uh, for one company and, and paid his taxes. We paid property taxes and that we see no return on our investment. So that's one of the reasons I'm running. The other reason is, uh, as an affordable housing commissioner, I sat you know, on the body that's supposed to advocate for affordable housing. And, and to be honest with you, it's a toothless committee. There's no, there's no budget we control. We don't have any, uh, any authority uh, any, of any type. So I, I see this as a very problematic uh, problems we have in, in our communities when that's the largest, the largest crisis we have on our hands. So I decided to run to try to make a difference. Uh, what makes me different from, from the other candidates? Uh, I'm not a career politician. I've been an advocate for social justice, economic justice, uh, you name it, I, I've done it. And I've been working with our youth, uh, I work with inner city struggle. So I see this as an opportunity to open doors for, for the younger generation given that they're not engaged in the civic process. Four years ago, only 6% of voters that voted were 59 or younger. 6%. That's nothing. So that means that we have to encourage our young people to engage in the civic process, to improve our communities, and to open the, the door for them to run for office. Um, if elected, the first thing I will do is continue the dialogue that we're having now with the community. Uh, I'm walking daily, knocking on doors, talking to people, and that's the only way we're going to find out what we need to do in the community, by engaging the constituents directly. If we get elected and then we you know, for, don't have a relationship with our constituents, we're never going to be able to, to uh, effectively address the issues affecting our communities. Uh, so I plan on... Thank you. Well, I certainly hope to earn your support on Election Day, March 3rd. I also want to encourage all of the people to come out and vote. All of you, thank all of you for coming here. I think you'll go back and hopefully call your neighbors and talk to your neighbors, trying to get those people out to vote. I also want to thank my colleagues here at the table. You know, they've had the courage to stand up to a very entrenched incumbent against special interests. Each of them have labored in putting together a campaign and putting together the effort, walking door to door, getting prepared and talking in issues and coming in forums like this. I think this is admirable and courageous work. It is a shame that we have an incumbent who chooses not to attend many of these forums, who only does it on his terms only, as he does everything that he does. And very frankly, I think we need to bring an end to that kind of arrogance. He needs to respond to people, he needs to be there for them, and he hasn't proven or has the capability of showing that. I hope that you as voters will look at the three of us as an option to overcome the kind of tyranny that Mr. Weezar has had for the 14th Council District, running it just the way he sees it, not including people. The first thing I'm going to do is turn around and make sure that I develop a system 
to respond to every single constituent who calls me, to evaluate those issues and to find a way that we can start addressing all of the needs collectively and becoming transparent as how we spend our money. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Once again, we thank you for your attendance. Um, very briefly, I would like to remind everyone, if you have not voted, please register to vote. You have until February the 17th to be eligible to vote in the March 3rd election. Also, oh, I'm going to say, oh, there's, better, there's voter registration forms in the back. Thank you very much. And, and also, there is a forum at Farmdale Elementary School on February the 19th, Farmdale Elementary is right across the street. And finally, um, at the end of this event, there are dedication ceremonies. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this uh, this Monday, okay, this Monday, the 16th, at 11 a.m. on Huntington and Van Horn, here in El Sereno, there is the El Sereno Veterans Monument dedication ceremony. Van Horn and Huntington Drive. At Van Horn and Huntington Drive. At the new flag.